In this tutorial, I want to show you how you can really push your colors without causing any nasty artifacts. So, just a few days ago, I published this short film to my channel called Bridge to Nowhere, and in the middle of this film, the greens suddenly turned red. So, there was this kind of a drastic color push in this. Uh, in this short film, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can do this. We'll be working in DaVinci Resolve, and we'll be working with the new Color Warper tool. So um, let's jump into Premiere Pro. No, what is this software? DaVinci Resolve. Yes, and here we have our clip that we're going to be examining and practicing on, and this is originally shot on the Sony A7 uh, III camera in the hybrid log, gum, hybrid log gamma profile in 8-bit. So it's not really the highest quality uh, source footage that you can have, but it's just perfect for this. And before we start, I want to mention that when you want to color grade your footage, of a shot with your camera, the same way as they uh, do in Hollywood and Netflix, using the same system called ACES. Uh, there's a free training underneath this video that you click, it's my free training, and in that tra training I'll teach you how you can do, uh, how you can match your footage to a movie reference using the same system as they use in Hollywood and Netflix. And that's the same system that I as used for this clip as well. But anyway, the link is underneath and in the end of the video as well. So let's start with this. So here we have our, um, well, green, and then I have this one node, and inside this one node, half of the screen I have uh, made like a drastic color change. And look, take a look at the edges, for example, here in the edge of the hair, there's no artifacts. And this is quite important because normally, if let's uh, close this off and let's make a parallel one and let's call this HSL, HSL, this is good. Um, normally, um, I, I see people doing this, that they go to the HSL mask, they select the area that they want to work with, for example, now, let's see how well we got it. Yes, we got it really well. And then they go and push their colors where they think they want their colors to be. For example, something like this. Well, it's quite not that much. Let's bring it down a bit. Something like this. But you can see that with this technique, there's a lot of artifacts. For example, here next to the hair, you can see this artifact there. And here, especially here, you can see these weird artifacts. And these are caused by this method being, well, a bit unsophisticated. We'll be doing this much more sophisticated, and this causes tearing in the color space. And there's two big, uh, like, jumps in color gradients, and that's why this doesn't really work. You could sometimes remedy it by giving a bit of blur radius to hide the, uh, this, uh, like, the problematic areas, but for example here, you can still, de see, still see this kind of artifact that there's this greenish halo on her hair. So we are not going to be using the HSL tool for this, and let's just reset the whole thing, but instead we are going to be using the new tool, the Color Warper, that you can find right here. And here's our example, and I'm actually using a power, power window as well, like dividing the, the frame in half. Um, but let's start from scratch and I'll be showing how to use this tool and how you like what to consider when you're doing this kind of extreme color color shifts. So let's make another one. Let's turn this one off. Let's call this extreme number two. And then let's start working. First of all, it's this is a very uh, like sophisticated tool and it's really nice to have it like really big. So click this and then you can have it like like this, like really big. And um, first of all, let's take a quick look at this interface. Um, this is basically our color space. Uh, this is currently we're using the HSP color space. You can use other of these color spaces, but basically the HSP and HSP log are the ones that are good. Log is when you, you have this node in your log color space or ACES uh, CCT color space. And the HSP is for your Rec 709 um, color work. So anyway, uh, here is our color space, and we're looking at it from the top. We have uh, our neutral axis, so all the neutral colors from black to pure white are here right in the middle, 
and then we go a further and further away from the neutral axis and we get more and more saturated colors. And here's our hue circle. And uh, all of the colors are here, actually this powder, this white powder that has been sp sprinkled around the circle, is the different pixels that we have in the image. For example, if, if I hover my mouse over the green, you can see that this powder, a pile of powder is activated. So it's showing that these pixels are located somewhere here. And for example, our skin, skin uh, pixels are located more or less in this blob. So this is basically similar to a vector scope. And then let's actually increase the fidelity of this uh, tool by going here and clicking, for example, eight or maybe even 12. No, I think eight is good. It's a good idea to kind of uh, have, like the more you have, the more control you have, but then it becomes kind of a bit more cumbersome to you. So I think eight in this case is good. So um, now that we're gonna start working on this, um, we need to first like decide what we want to do. And I want to push my greens to be really saturated and really like cinematic reds, like blood, <laughs> blood red. At least that was kind of my idea, like giving some kind of like a shocking color there. So to do that, um, I can start dragging these um, these nodes or these kind of dots around here and start moving them around. But in general, it's a good idea to kind of understand how this works. So when I move this node, all of the other nodes move with it and I can push my greens there, but half of the greens are uh, affected by this. So I can push this here as well. So this is... That's it, that's very uh, easy. And when you look inside, we don't have any of those nasty artifacts that we would had with the masking tool, even here in the neutral areas, we don't have them because this is much more sophisticated tool. Um, and tearing happens when you do like two drastic uh, like changes in the color space. There might be some um, like uh, artifacts between if there would be a, like a gradient from green to this teal color, because this uh, line here is kind of stretched. And these are actually like um, symbolizing on how much we're stretching the color space. So it could be a good idea to, uh, to loosen the stretchiness, like loosen the tension by bringing this uh, in a bit. And in this case, because we don't really have any colors here, it's not really affecting anything. So that's like, it's like, why not? And this actually makes the, uh, this like operation, this node m much more general, because right now it doesn't really matter if we just stretch this a lot, but in some other picture, there might be some gradient from green to teal, and then it will start showing. So uh, to make this more kind of universal, let's bring it somewhere here. And now, um, like all of these lines between like this, like spider web lines between these uh, dots, um, whenever we are pulling more length to them, we are kind of stretching the color space. And when we're bringing them closer, we're actually kind of compressing the color space. And when we're compressing the color space, then no artifacts are basically uh, are able to come visible. So in this case, when we're doing this kind of operation that we just pushed all the greens there, uh, and then like bringing this, we actually uh, loosened, like we compressed the color space. So there will be no artifacts whatsoever in this image. Um, if I turn this node on and off, you can see that we are actually slightly affecting the skin color as well, because the skin color is this uh, powder blob here. And when we folded, we kind of like made the, uh, we made this fold onto itself. So it started here, we folded on top of itself. Uh, some of the skin tones actually um, went a bit towards uh, the magenta side. So they became slightly less uh, yellow and more red. So we could compensate by pushing this back in a bit, something like this. And then let's see how it looks when we turn the node on and off. And that's good. That's really good. Okay, so that's uh, like an easy way of using this uh, grid. And just rem remember that the avoid stretching things too much. And let's just see where your colors are. Another way of seeing uh, where your colors are is actually pressing one of these nodes with uh, pressing down your Alt button. And then you can click on this and then you can see what colors are each of, each of these circles affecting. And that's a kind of nice way of like, like seeing like, for example, I would work, like to work with the skin tone. So here it is, here's the skin tones. Those are like affecting as well. And then I can select multiple ones. For example, I could work with all of these skin tone ones and just select them all like this and then work with them and make the skin, I could basically make the skin <laughs> kind of agree, but that will be kind of odd. So um, this is how this works. And then let's start continue, uh, let's start working, like continue working with our 
um, uh, yellows. Oh no, these greens, the, the extreme color grade that we were doing. So I would like to make them darker and desaturate them. And to do that, uh, we are going to, uh, first of all, I'm going to right click all of these black nodes because I don't want them to be active because they're kind of locked when they're black, they don't move. But anyway, I want to make these less saturated and a bit darker. So let's bring them closer to the neutral axis. Here's the neutral axis. So if we bring the, uh, the greens, these were greens originally, now they're reds. I'm going to bring them closer to the neutral axis. And as you can see, they're getting desaturated. And then I want to make them darker. And to do that, I'm going to use one of these tools. There's a lot of tools here. They're very self-explanatory. For example, this one, select pin column. If I click this, it selected all of these ones. And if I click this one, and then again, it selected all of those kind of this one column from the uh, neutral axis all the way to the most saturated colors. And now, and now I can go here to the Luma uh, tool and bring this down. Let's bring it down like, for example, to let's actually dial in the number. It's easier. 0 0.2. And as you can see, it's getting darker. Let's actually bring it. Let's actually bring it all the way to zero. So now we have very, very dark, like this uh, almost like brown uh, color uh, here on, on uh, like green. And that's really easy. And you just kind of select you. You first you need to analyze uh, what are these blobs. For example, these blobs here are her pants and I think the sky and the shirt. As you can see, when I'm hovering over the, her shirt, that's the that's that's where the cross is indicating that these are colors are. So then I select the um, kind of nodes that are related to that area, and I might select all of them by selecting like all of the like all of the different saturation vari vari variants of that, and just bring them, for example, here to this magenta area. Or then I could, for example, just add a bit of saturation to those ones. Yeah, well, this is relatively easy to understand. So this is how it works. Uh, in this tool, we do have this kind of a, a different kind of tool, but unfortunately, I think this is not really working. For example, uh, this, they, at least on my computer, this doesn't really work. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna touch it this time. So this is, this is how this works. And uh, yeah, you can just uh, very easily push your colors to be basically wherever you want, as long as you make sure that you're not increasing the stretchiness of uh, these nodes, well, to a certain degree, depending on the quality of your footage. But if you don't want to have any artifacts, don't stretch the lines between the uh, circles. Instead, try to compress them, so then you don't get any artifacts. And that's about it. And what now <laughs> you have learned this technique, and you want to learn more about how to color grade your footage, like they do in Hollywood and Netflix, using the same system as they use there. There's a free training underneath this link, uh, this video, and this link floating around my head as well. So click that and see you in that free training or in the next tutorial of mine. See you around.